Hello, Namaste everyone. Welcome to DDY Swadhyaya English session of third day. My name is Anita. I'm from Bangalore. I have been practicing meditation from 2002 and uh, meditation is a gift to my life. And today in the Swadhyaya session, we have a guest called Aditya Dattaji with us. So I will introduce Aditya Dat Dattaji first. So Aditya Dattaji was an uh, IT professional earlier and was at that time he was having difficulty in gender identification. So he went into deep depression during that period of time and he has been searching for meditation to come out of it. And in that process, he has been searching for meditations and he has practiced Vipassana meditation, has been to Osho Center, but he could not get that get out of depression even after practicing many meditations. So in the year of 2008, he, ha he met Dr. Newton and uh, he has undergone past life regression therapy. Due, due, uh, be, uh, because of that, he was able to come out of his depression. And he, and he also met Patriji in Pyramid Valley many times and he started practicing meditation. Through that, he came out of all these depressions and um, his confusions, his questions, so many things. And he, from 2012, he has changed his profession to like, um, he has become a counselor in Life University. He is a psychologist, sexologist, alchemist, and he's also author of two great books. That is Transition and second book is Gandharva Loka. So today he'll be taking us, his, his topic is how to understand this polarity and how that will help in our daily life. I welcome Aditya Dattaji to this Swadhyaya platform. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Anita Ji. Thank you very much to uh, the Pyramid uh, Sangha. It's a great work you all are doing and I'm privileged to be here. Very happy to be here. Um, so what I want to start with is a question. I want to start with a question to the viewers asking or maybe just telling them, what if I tell you that there is no man or woman. What if I tell you that sexuality is a myth? So friends, we are going to start with this question today. The topic is divine union. And uh, of course, we are going deeper into this topic today. So uh, yes, I can see people uh, who are there joining and I welcome all of them. I see Deepa Yadav, good to see you Deepa and uh, many friends would be joining. So you can send question on the chat box and uh, the session will go as I will introduce a little about my life. Then we will go into this quest of this, uh, what is this gender? What is this uh, sexuality, divine sexuality that I want to talk about? Like, And what is this? Uh, uh, you know, uh, this, this uh, path that I am here to share, very interesting. How can we use it in our daily life? And we will do very interesting processes in between. And at the end, we are going to keep some time for the question answer. I think that that would be good. Uh, Anita ji, I think that that's the plan, right? So uh, yes, we yes, can go please. with that plan. Wonderful, wonderful. So let me uh, start by sharing a, uh, the, my uh, little uh, presentation that I made. And I think that would be good. Okay, I think Anita ji, we can see the presentation. It is there. You can see it. Wonderful. So I made this presentation for you friends. So divine union of consciousness and energy. So this uh, sounds a little complicated <laughs> to me also, but I'm going to share what it is. Uh, you will come to know gradually uh, 
about it but uh, let us first go through what we will explore today right so what we will learn is how to create a balance in our life so we keep on listening to the word balance but how do we create balance right this is what we would be learning today and what is this divine masculine divine feminine we are going to learn about what is this wounded masculine and feminine how to create a strong identity as you know in the spiritual path we keep on saying right we have to dissolve our identity uh, i am nothing right but in the earth plane there needs to be a strong identity my friends we are going to talk about it and finally we are going to talk about sex sexual transmutation and i have very uh, i hope you like the exercises that i'll be doing today for you to get a clarity on this subject so um i would start by uh, you know uh, with this quote that i want to be whole why do we even want to understand uh, spiritual subjects or why are we interested in in uh, meditation as uh, anita ji rightly uh, said that you know i went through my own depression i was confused about my gender and i started meditating and all of us friends we are trying to become whole we want to become full right we don't want to become uh, half like we i think we call ardhangini right it feels like i am half and i am going to get married to uh, my better half so we say ardhangini better half right is it true that there is some half waiting outside for us we are going to talk about it so yes so let me start with my journey friends this is the book uh, transition and uh, it's a book that is written uh, by me on awakening through gender identity so i as i said you know or anita ji explained how i was confused about my gender you know i always questioned you know what is it to be a man what is it to be a woman if we see a man and a woman is that uh, enough for us to understand that this is a man or a woman or is there something deeper what what are the qualities of a man or a woman so this book you know uh, talks about my own rejection my own depression and then uh, how i got the divine guidance uh, uh, through many masters of course uh, 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 brahmarishi patri ji uh, being my meditation guide dr newton uh, being my guide for the last 10 years and then my transition so this book talks about this journey and uh, it's it's there on amazon so uh, what i want to let out is i i never thought i'm going to speak in public about this confusion but after i meditated after i went through my process something inside me started pushing me to talk about my journey it said you know i need to share it to people because there's so many taboos attached to especially the male female identities you know we have put this gender uh, you know gender bias is there so many things around gender and sexuality so i thought you know i need to speak about this subject about my journey so that's what this book is all about and then you know after i wrote the book i felt this book is not complete i felt incomplete inside and it happened during this lockdown uh, i i was i went into like kind of a depressed state you know when the lockdown started and something started coming out of me and i started just writing you know i i connected to like a plane of uh, poets of singers of uh, architects of scientists who started communicating with me and i started asking them the question about this gender this uh, uh, masculine feminine and they started giving me answers so it's a beautiful plane i connected and i can say like it's kind of like a channeling uh, that happened to me during that time and they started giving me the grander picture of uh, gender and sexuality it's a upcoming book called gandharva loka i didn't know what loka i was talking to but then in my meditation i was told that this is gandharva loka and i met very wonderful masters there 
one of the masters they were called the shape shifter they do didn't had a shape they can you know they always keep changing shapes they can become a tree and then a leaf and then a bird and then a man then a woman they are always you know changing shapes and they gave me the broader spectrum the broader picture of uh, this gender gender identity this masculine feminine and sexuality so i i questioned all whatever i had in my heart whatever confusion i had still left i started questioning and this book is about that so uh, it it is uh, talking about the grander version of gender and sexuality and all the myths about uh, you know sexuality and gender they you know they clarified to me they they trained me what is this how can we evolve with this energy right so these are the things friends i'm going to share today um, and i hope it's going to benefit you all so my first question to all of you uh, is like what do you think is gender so i'll give you like half a minute here maybe you can type some answers wherever you are and tell me what do you mean by this term uh, gender yes whatever you understand with the by the term maybe you can type it or we, you can send a message to me right it it is a construct right it it is a construct right and friends the way i see gender is like i see gender in everything you see the minutest atom in a molecule has gender you see there is a polarity there negative and positive is there right whatever you see you will see gender exist from the minutest like an atom to the grander version we find there is a polarity there is a gender in everything right so this is the quest we are going to go further with and now i'm going to so you know basically in this discussion friends i'm going to use this word masculine and feminine so please do not misunderstand it as male or female male or female are the external identities but masculine and feminine i will be talking more about this internal identity that we have so we we'll learn about it now i'm going to talk about sexuality what is sexuality it's like a umbrella term right there is a sexual identity there is an orientation there is something called biological sex and the entirely call is an expression so you don't have to go too much deep into the picture that i'm showing you it is just for you you can find it on the internet i i found it like a good way to explain but just on the very easier level if you need to understand identity is what you think in the mind am i a male or am i a female or i am some other right and orientation is who am i attracted to which gender am i attracted to sometimes it happens that a male is attracted to another male it happens right so that is the orientation right and then we have something called a biological sex that is the uh, you know the kind of genitals sexual organs that we are born with that is the biological sex and then this entire package of this thing is called the expression and then we also understand there are people who are transgenders right they are born somewhere in between right they are sometimes they identify themselves as male female both or you know a male uh, a biological male can identify himself as a female right so those are called transgender so we see this variation in gender when we look into the subject and friends this is a beautiful picture i i got and it says around the globe people identify with various kind of gender so you see there is no more male and female there are 
all variation of gender now so a person can say i am a, a male but half male but half alien right they also can term that as a kind of gender so it's also beautiful that we are breaking the gender binary you know because we are used to categorize things in a certain way i'm sure we all resonate with this like as a child you know we are told that boys can't cry you know are you are you a girl like why why are you crying you know you can't cry because you're a boy you are supposed to be very strong you're supposed to uh, you know behave in a certain way right and for the girls i think it, it, it's some difference even for instance colors we have attached colors also to the gender let's say you know in a word we have said boys are blue women are pink so when we see pink you know we always associate with women and if a boy likes pink then you know he is ridiculed and he is made fun of if he is wearing a pink shirt or you know something uh, like a more feminine so we see androgynous gods friends like shiva ganesha happy in different cultures so these are gods they already uh, uh, show us the androgynous nature of our soul right so it's just not the external gods that uh, are there they have depicted because the you know with with a with a statue with a uh, with a uh, like a symbolism they are trying to say that this is what we are also inside like ardha nareshwar the half man half woman ganesha i mean he is neither a male nor a female he is androgynous right so we have these examples so let us learn what is gender in the bigger spectrum what is the picture of gender in the bigger spectrum so i'm going to explain you with a small uh, presentation so i see it like this if you sprinkle some colors on water right and you see different colors like yellow pink red they are getting you know uh, like uh, they they are mixing with each other so from there comes a set of people with different colors right so it's not binary it's many colors that can come out of that and from there you know we have this now scale also which is you see on the left side you have the barbie which i have uh, you know labeled as the extreme feminine like extreme means you know she's very very feminine very delicate and on the right there is a gi joe that is extreme male so my question to you friends is where on a spectrum on the spectrum might your gender identity be so please look into the scale let us spend like half a minute here and find out where is your spectrum like you know there is a the yellow man or you know it's like could be like a half man half woman you know like balanced more balanced state right and the, on the left side 1 to 5 it's the feminine and the 7 to maybe the extreme 11 12 is the masculine so where is your scale like where, where is your number have a look right so friends these are like clues because when we are questioning gender we are getting more deeper into understanding our identity a person who has understood gender he has crossed or he or she because the person is going to go into the soul understanding gender is the last identity that falls off from a person right so let's see 
yeah so here is what we are going to talk about this balance and why do why do you think like we need a balance in the masculine feminine that's what we are going to talk another example is i'm going to talk about by splitting of the sexes like what happened like what's the story how did this male female come where did they come from so this is what happened so first it says there was a void there was something uh called uh, or maybe it's called nothingness right so the void is basically what it's pure consciousness and from the void it started changing the void started giving rise to something so they said the void got bored becoming void the void got bored becoming nothing so it started becoming a frequency some sound some energy started coming and from there there had been two divisions basically it is one division like light started coming and wherever there was the absence of light friends was darkness so basically there is no darkness right it's a, it's like it doesn't exist but it came like two division one part started becoming the light another started becoming the dark from the light started coming further division known and unknown light became the known and the darkness became the unknown and from the known unknown now this is the interpretation known became the masculine unknown became becomes the feminine now please don't understand that i mean that woman means dark and man means light it's not like that right it is just that the feminine is more into the mystery she lives in a mystery and darkness is associated with the mystery and please understand i'm trying to say the word feminine not female right so a male also has his own feminine and masculine inside so for a male it could be that he's 70% more masculine and maybe 30% feminine for the feminine it could be the opposite or you know a combination right so this is the story of splitting of the sexes like where the gender has split so now understanding coming into the you like how we use this so coming to that part we have this left and the right brain we all know that there are two different kinds uh, you know these two hemisphere operates right the, so the left is about uh, definitely about the logical uh, rational linear more of a scientific thinking right and the right consists of the emotional more of the creative the artistic part of it and we are understanding that both is very important art is as important as science right so the left hemisphere can be termed as the masculine and the right can be termed more as a feminine and friends this is what we require as the masculine uh, the you know a uh, uh, friendship between the to spare it says if you have to come to a conclusion and you are calculating for maybe 10 years an intuition can give you that in a fraction of second so intuition is can be so powerful friends i'm sure if you have if you know the biography of these great scientists like newton or let's say nikola tesla nikola tesla as a child he had a rare fever and in that fever he started getting visions of his machines 
right? And those vision he started drawing. And he confesses how his subconscious has shown all these, uh, because he was ahead of his time. Right? Even today, there is a lot of research going on Nikola Tesla. Today, we are still uh, trying to understand what Nikola Tesla has said so many years back. How, how could he talk about all those things? So he had those vision from his creative mind. And as he was a scientist, he could interpret the, the creative information to his left brain and create something out of it. So here, now we come to the application part of it, friends. Ying Yang. Ying, the feminine energy, Yang, the masculine energy. In the Chinese language, there are different names to these masculine and feminine energies. So what is it that we call the masculine energy now, right? So he's a giver, right? He gives. And it's more of an outward flow of energy. He's creating something. He's manifesting something on earth, right? So it's an energy that moves from inward to outward. He's a protector. He protects. He's logical. Focused. He's about nothing. He loves to have space. He's, he wants to stay, uh, you know, in his cave sometimes. So he's about nothing. He's looking, his search is for nothingness. And he's the unmanifest. So friends, Please don't get too much entangled with the words because these words can flip. Some, some people can say it's, it could be because I have given the signs of the feminine. See, the, you know, riding a bicycle or a woman warrior is the woman is using her masculine power. Even we see Durga, Kali having these masculine powers, right? So that's the masculine part of that identity. But then Durga wants to express herself as a mother. Her external, um, you know, the picture that she wants to depict is as a mother. She wants to dance like a feminine, right? But that doesn't mean that she's not using her masculine power, right? So this is the masculine trait in a, in a nutshell. And now let's talk about what is the feminine? Even men have feminine qualities. He can be a receiver, right? He can receive. It's, it's an inward flow. So when you are nurturing someone, you are taking care of something, it's an inward flow of energy. Even a spiritual journey or a you know, meditation practice is more of like an inward journey. And uh, feminine can be a nurturer. She can be intuitive. She can do multitasking. She's about the manifest and she's about the mystery. So friends, look at these qualities and see where you resonate with it more. Like which one do you feel are the more dominant traits in you? It doesn't matter if externally we are a male or female. So let's spend like half a minute here. So friends, we all need these two qualities in our lives, right? So feminine and masculine. What happens is sometimes if we are too much in the feminine end, we, 
we feel that you know there needs to be like a male who would be giving all the masculine support the guidance the discipline to me and the 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 female i mean who consider herself as more of a feminine energy she waits you know she first depends on her father for example and then she looks for those traits in a husband right but often this happens because you know this relationships this about a more of a give and take so if the male is not able to provide those qualities to her she gets upset so hence you know the relationship problems are there right and here and it's same with the male right if the male feels that oh you know i need a female in my life who can give me the nurturance the the empathy the compassion the creative touch right and then you know he has an expectation that one female would come into and like my life and provide all that and for some reason the wife can't provide that so he goes into like he's uh, not happy with that relationship so here this is what happens is if you look down this uh, description of feminine and masculine this is where the wounded feminine and the wounded masculine come into picture so i can say you know this polarity it can be either a divine polarity or it can be a wounded polarity and uh, what are the wounded feminine traits now as you have seen the divine feminine traits the wounded can be you know she can be very insecure she can be very needy right she can be manipulative and the masculine traits can be he could be very aggressive he can be controlling dominating abusive so let us take an example here friends like how to understand this this how this two dynamics works let's say i want to reduce my weight right i have got very plumpy i have a heavy body now i want to reduce my weight right so if i have a wounded feminine inside me so the wound, wounded feminine would have a poor me story it will say oh i can't get up in the morning i am so tired i don't have the energy right and um, she will try to manipulate her story it's the inner dialogue that goes on inside us not to anybody else but to ourselves sometimes and the wounded masculine is going to say inside me that you know you have to you got to prove yourself you are so you look so bad you know i i hate looking at your body you have to do something about your body so you see what's happening the there is this wounded feminine and the wounded masculine not making me go and do the activities that i require to reduce my weight but because of that conflict that is happening with the wounded feminine and wounded masculine within me i am not able to go uh you know and take the steps that are required for me to reduce my weight so what has to be done friends this is where i think the best way to balance is one of the best ways meditation right when we start meditating all these wounds started dropping off wounds are from the past either we are hurted in our childhood sometimes we are hurted maybe in past lives some hurt we are carrying where this wounded feminine is born where this wounded masculine is born and through meditation regular practice of meditation this wound can wash off and if you are not able to heal those wounds there are other techniques the other beautiful methodologies like i i said you know i went to dr newton and i did past life regression uh, i'm also a regression therapist and i see how people benefit from this regression therapy from the inner child work from the family constellation beautiful modality even uh, with this 
uh, masculine feminine understanding how people really can come out of their wombs and then they start developing a divine masculine and a feminine identity of themselves so what happens the same identity was which was pulling you down or you know i was giving an example of losing weight so what happened is this divine polarity the divine masculine will say don't worry i am there i'll support you and he's not going to judge he's going to discipline himself he will be confident that yes i am going to reduce my weight and the feminine will say i will support you i will nurture you whatever you need if you need rest you can rest there rest but then you know it's going into real deep rest the divine feminine really teaches us how to rest otherwise we are not resting friends even in our sleep we are fighting in our dreams how many of us can really say that we know how to relax only the meditator who are um, constantly meditating they can claim that you know they can really know what is restfulness right so real rest is required and spontaneous actions are required and with that help i can gain energy and i can lose my weight so this example can be valid in any other aspect many other aspect whatever you call it you can use this principle friends and uh, yes this is another example of the world society what is the patriarchal society says the patriarchal which is a man made society believes in history believes in linear time believes in dogmas rationalities science is more scientific the matriarchal who are more feminine based societies they believe in eternity the cycle of times ritual magic alter states art so you see the difference this is a science based society art based society i feel the amalgam both is required that is divine union when the both the divine masculine the divine feminine can meet that is the divine marriage and also friends we all need to have that divine marriage inside us so before i go to the next portion uh, let us do a small meditation friends which it's good to have some experience as we go through this uh, theoretical understanding so we will start the meditation what i want you to do is it's it's good if you can stand up for this meditation it's always good and place your feet firmly uh, on the ground right so you can stand and if you really have don't have an option to stand you can sit that's fine okay so this meditation is to balance the masculine and feminine it's a beautiful meditation and i would like you all to sit straight okay so if you are standing i like you to feel that you are like a tree and you can close your eyes let your feet be firm you can take your time to wherever you are maybe i'll give you like a half a minute right and now you can close your eyes friends and take some take few deep breaths just some cleansing deep breaths and first put your attention on your heart feel your heart your breathing in and out right 
So now from the heart, take your attention down to your feet. Feel your feet. Now, like a tree, imagine or feel that you are growing roots inside the earth as if your lower body is developing roots and the roots are going deep inside wherever you are, the room or the floor. Imagine they are going deeper inside the Mother Earth. And you can feel the moist soil and the roots going very deep down into the middle of the earth and it's coiling at the middle of the earth you can visualize this or feel it huge roots are going from your lower body and going to the bottom of the mother earth And you're feeling a pull down as if the Mother Earth is pulling you down with the roots. And now I'd like you to breathe in through the roots and breathe out. Breathe in pure nature energy. breathe out any tension, anxiety, anything that you're holding in your body, release it through your roots. Do it for a few times. Bring your attention from your feet, from the Mother Earth. Bring yourself back into the heart. Breathe that beautiful energy in your heart. As a tree now, feel that you're now breathing into your head. Feel that your attention is on your head from the head you are growing branches huge branches is going like above the ceiling above the clouds above the sky its branches are going into the cosmos and it's getting anchored into the different galaxies and you're feeling an outward or like an upward pull now breathe in from the cosmos into your head and release 
everything or anything that you need to release at this point of time. Breathe in. Breathe out. Couple of breaths. Bring this energy from your head into your heart. Just feel that now you're breathing into your heart. As you breathe in, the heart is radiating. Stay in your heart. You are breathing in all this wonderful, beautiful balance of the earth and the sky. Mother Earth, Father Sky. In your heart. And you are breathing out all the love, the beautiful feeling around you, surrounding you. Let it spread. And for a couple of minutes, just reside in your heart for some time. Stay there. Okay, friends, now whenever you are ready with this beautiful heart energy, you can rub your hands, put them on your eyes, and allow your eyes to gently open. Wonderful, friends. So, this is an exercise uh, that can be done anytime whenever we feel a little disbalanced, we want to bring the balance in our life, we want to center ourselves. So beautiful way to do that, yeah? So we'll move on to the next uh, portion friends and more examples how to bring balance friends um, I feel the you know the nature is a beautiful place anytime we want a balance in our life we can just go out reach the nature just being in pure nature is it brings us so much balance in our, our lives right so meditation nature and if we find ourselves is balanced sometimes also the practice of gratitude we can shift that energy you know that maybe we are not feeling confident we are not feeling secured or there is a fear immediately we can switch, switch our mind to practice gratitude what are the good things that i feel wonderful about and you know i keep on repeating that in my mind that can also bring in balance so friends, meditation, second is reaching out into the nature, third is practicing gratitude. Immediately can shift our energy into balance. So friends, okay, I
yeah i just have to um, go to the next part now yeah so this is uh, where uh, i find the interesting part starts uh, my favorite subject the law of polarity so friends now as we learn balance many times we feel polarity is like a distraction right so uh, i am working on becoming very confident but i know there is a part of me that is also fearful right and i you you name it whatever it is like day night uh hot cold all things have a polarity right so i generally don't believe in that concept that we have to be positive in our life you know that really doesn't work friends so what is the law of polarity talking about let us first understand the law of polarity what it says the law of polarity says it's one it's not two though we see it as two it is one yes it's sometimes difficult to see things as one because in our real eyes with two eyes when we are seeing things it two things we are seeing there is a dark darkness is coming in the night and morning is there sense of perception but the kind of plane that we dwell in is a relative plane friends and this not might not be the same in the other plane for example i just told you about this example dark and light right we have darkness we say no no there is this night falling and then there is a morning the sun comes up right but what happens if you are taken out into the space you are no longer on the earth plane will you still, still see day and night there don't you think the perception is going to change there so why the law of polarity exist on earth because it's the kind of dimension or the kind of reality that we live in so it's relative friends so the in that perception now we can say yes it's one where is the night and day it's because of the earth's rotation it's because of the placement of the sun right another example i can give is okay we will say oh you know this is hot and cold but the hot exists because there is a cold what is hot cold it is in comparison to something the other exist in a whole it is a scale it's the scale called the scale of temperature so the temperature exist the hot and cold is again relative wherever we are in the scale we perceive it that way so the first law of polarity which we discuss is everything is one it's not two right second thing that i learned from the law of polarity it says opposites are complementary opposites really are not there to trouble us to take us out from our real nature but opposites are complementary they help each other we see this beautiful picture of ardhanareshwara right shiva is the example of the right amalgam of the feminine and the masculine balance he has both the qualities in him ardhanareshwara roop right and it says when we are in a healthy divine masculine feminine balance it can help us it's not opposites i was giving you the example how in a couple the the man can be like a supportive you know he can be like a pillar of strength in the family and support the woman and the woman can in return be the nurturer 
the mother and the intuitive part in the family. So when a family has this balanced masculine feminine, the family will grow. So the law of polarity is there to make us evolve. The law of polarity is there to make us more aware. Whenever we are dwelling in the wounded masculine feminine, it feels like it is tearing us apart. Yes, because we are dwelling in ignorance. We need to see where the wound is coming from. Where is the masculine wound? Where is my feminine wound coming from? What are the sources? And when we can heal these wounds, we'll be able to develop this divine masculine feminine. And hence is the second law. The law of polarity, the second law says, polarity are, they are complementary to each other. And then the third law of polarity, which is again very interesting, most interesting part I feel, is when we reject one part, we are rejecting the other. Let me repeat it. When we reject one part, we are rejecting the whole. What is the example? Let me take an example. Like I have a friend, right? I like everything about that friend. You know, he is so helpful, he is so kind, he's my best friend. But then he is a drunkard, he drinks. And when he drinks, he has a different personality. And I don't like that. So, is it possible that I can welcome that friend in my life or I can have that friend in my life without that part, which is a drunkard? Can I put uh, that drunkard out of him and accept him as a friend? Is it possible? So the, the drunkard part with that part that I like is my friend in a whole. Example, I am Aditya and uh, I have these good traits in me, but then I have also this little anger in me sometimes. So I push it back. You know, I don't want to confess that I am also an angry person. So do I accept myself fully? The law of polarity says, if I'm rejecting one part, I'm rejecting the whole. Because how can I come somewhere without that angry part of me? How my friend can come and accompany me, leaving that drunkard part in him? Because that's one of his personality. It is one part of him. That's what he is. Sometimes we make a mistake that we want to change that part. You know, in our relationship, we really want, don't want that. We want to scrape it out. So, similarly, we understand that masculine, feminine, we need to accept this polarity inside us also, friends. We need to know, we need to Realize that, yes, I am a masculine and a feminine inside. Both. I am both. I am Ardhanareshwara. And when I can accept these two parts inside me, when I can realize that two parts inside me, I can be a better father. A mother can be a better mother. An architect can be a better architect. A painter can be a better painter. Whatever profession we are in, we can be better at that. We can improve our relationships in this understanding, improve our abundance, improve our health. These dynamics can work everywhere. So the law of polarity teaches us acceptance, friends. Accepting the whole as it is. Right? So if we have a difficult relationship, let's say, with our parents, 
I don't like this part of my parent. I don't like this part of my mother. For example, we are rejecting her completely then. We need to accept her with that part. Then only it's a full acceptance. So friends, the three things, again, the law of polarity teaches us. The first is, it's only one, it's not two. Second, it says, polarities are complementary, they help each other. And third, it says, when we reject one, we are rejecting the other. Such profound uh, wisdom, the law of polarity teaches us, friends. And a person who has mastered the law of polarity has mastered life. See, we keep talking about the law of attraction. I want good health. And I don't want to be sick. So when I say I don't want, that is already being included in my wanting. Because that's there. So first, the law of polarity says you accept it. Yes, I am not in a healthy position right now. Let me accept that state. Because that's what I'm going through right now. I can't run away from it right now. And then the second stage is when we accept it, the second polarity also starts opening up for us. Health starts opening up, which is the opposite of illness. So friends, yeah, before we go into this understanding of the energy, I'd like you to do a process, a short process of facing this polarity. I'd like you to think of a very, or any situation or any person whom you think you have a conflict with. Any person or a situation where you feel you have a conflict. Just I'll give you half a minute. Right. And now we'll do a short process. I welcome you to close your eyes and just stay with the breath, like how we generally center ourselves with the breathing. Just stay with the breath. Or maybe take two, three deep breaths to center ourselves. At this moment, I'd like you to face this person or situation with whom you have a conflict. Now, as you face this person or situation, whoever it is, you might feel angry, you might have resistance to face it. or there might be other sensations or discomfort in your body. I'd like you to stay with it. I'd like you to try this exercise, friends. Face that situation as if you are looking into that person's eyes or if you're facing that situation right now. And be aware of the sensations that are happening in your body, in your mind, whatever is happening, just be aware of that. Accept those feelings, even if they are not good feelings. It's okay. But I'd like you to face 
that person or situation. And I'd like you to not go into any stories. Just face as if you're looking inside the eye of that person. Without any story. And if, if it's like, if you're getting too, any kind of pain or discomfort, if it's like too much, I'd like you to breathe into that. Keep facing that person. without any judgment, without any story. Be aware of the body sensation, whatever is happening. And keep breathing inside. You might feel like reacting. I like you to be aware. And simply your breathing in and out of that sensation, whatever is happening in your body, in your mind. Keep facing it. It's okay. You might get distracted again. Bring your attention back. Look into the eye of that person or feel that you're in that situation. And keep breathing. And I like you to feel as if your chest is expanding and you're taking a more of a straight expanding posture rather than like hunching forward. You're, you're just sitting straight, your chest is out and you're facing that person. As if you're open. Keep breathing, my friends. And keep your attention into the eyes of that person. Right. Now you may want to disconnect yourself from this person or situation. And I'd like you to go back into that tree posture. You can sit or stand up, becoming that tree. Imagine you have huge roots. And your head has huge branches like tree, touching the sky, touching the space and you're breathing inside your heart as if whatever the unnecessary feelings are there in the body, the residue, imagine that you're giving it to the mother earth and you're taking all this cosmic energy into your body from your head. 
become this huge tree. Now, before you come back, I'd like you to center yourself in your heart, feel your heart, beautiful energy in your heart. And whenever you're ready, you can rub your hands, put them on your eyes, allow your eyes to open. That's wonderful, my friends. So, you can share your experience if you want. Uh, any, anybody has any questions regarding it, you can ask. Um, most of the time what I hear people saying is they might come back with some pains in their body, okay? So what I ask you to do is you can repeat this exercise again, right? And that will help you release this conflict uh, or this conflicting situation, right? So if you have a pain somewhere, you can again repeat this later, friends. And many people, they might come up feeling very fresh, very relaxed, and they report that they are able to face that polarity in a much better way. Many people, they just drop that conflict after going through this exercise. So it's a very beautiful way to resolve your conflict is you are facing that polarity as it is. Okay, friends. So as we move forward, uh, if you have any questions, you can put the question again in the question box on the chat box. And when I get time, I'm going to answer them. And now we are going to go to the next part of the presentation. Is to understand energy. So, we know that we are made of some energy, right? And we are just not this gross physical bodies. So, what, in my understanding, friends, what I understand as energy is there's only one energy in the body and we have named it in different ways. Sometimes we call it uh, the prana, the chi, sometimes the sexual energy, kundalini energy, the life force energy. It's the same energy, friends, that runs in our body. And for those two energies to run, like you see, there is a diode, right? The battery has two ends, the positive and the negative, right? And this energy in the body flows you know, from the positive to the negative. There's a flow. When there is two poles of the diet, the energy flows from one pole to the other. And this is what we have termed as the sexual energy. So this now the next section we're going to talk about uh, this very interesting and maybe most understood, misunderstood subject, which is the sexuality. So friends, there are so many dogmas regarding this sexual energy and um, we have, we are coming with a lot of beliefs about the sexual energy because we have been conditioned a very early age, the condition starts happening. When uh, someday our parents or some elder has told us, you know, like, Chi Chi, don't, don't touch those parts. They are very uh, dirty parts or they are the parts you can't show or you have to hide those parts. From there, you know, we have started developing a, cons uh, uh, like a belief that it's wrong. Right? This, this part comes, it's wrong. And on top of that, there are many layers that we start developing around this energy. 
And what happens is when this energy is trapped, when we are not clear about this energy, we are holding a huge potential in our body which we are not using it properly. So friends, if we are not clear about the sexual energy, even if we call ourselves like meditators or spiritual people, we first we need, need to look into the lower chakras. Rather than focusing on the higher chakras, I feel it is important to look into the lower chakras, the Muladhara, the Swadishthana, the Manipura. These are the chakras. We, many people who call themselves meditator or spiritual people, they lack. They are confused about this area. They are not able to manifest their life because these chakras are blocked from them. For me also, friends, as I was sharing you my journey, these were the chakras that were totally blocked. I didn't want to even speak about it. I didn't want to look at it. Right? But meditation, the spiritual journey, the guidance of masters helps us to look into these and you know, have a right understand about this energies. So we have to repro, you know, we, we are programmed in the wrong way, but the knowing is there. The true understanding about it is already there. So the purpose of this presentation is to awaken the true understanding of what we already know. So what is this flow? Of, I was talking about the sexual energy flow, right? What is the sexual energy flow? We have it in the body. So we see that our body, there is a continuous energy flow. Even there are instrument nowadays, a uh, very sophisticated instrument has come and they clearly shows that the body has a lot of energy and it's going in cycles. So if there is a beautiful flow of the energy, we feel very healthy. And if the energy is blocked, we feel unhealthy. And it can, it can be a block in a lot of other things, relationship block, uh, abundance block, health block or you know some other kind of uh, fear or insecurities or phobias that we hold that can also block this energy right and you know if we have this other person with whom this energy flow is beautiful we call it like a sexual attraction right the other battery which is showing is like a sexual attraction it's a flow of energy and not only, you know, it happens between man and woman, friends. Uh, let us also think in terms of like, you know, like when we see like small pup, a beautiful pup, right? And it's so cute, so sweet to look at. We get attracted. That's also a flow of energy. We don't have to always term it as uh, a sexual energy, but it's that life force energy. When you see a, a child, full of life force energy, right? So this is what is uh, the flow of energy between the two polarities. So polarity is again required for this energy to flow properly. And the same flow is happening in the entire cosmos. So first we have seen it, how it has happened. Uh, maybe it is happening in the atoms, the, the negative, positive pole. And then we understand how uh, as uh, masculine, feminine, or male, female, the attraction is there, or uh, the attraction is there uh, between, um, uh, let's say, like a child and a mother. That's also like a beautiful attraction. Life force is flowing. And then in the higher planes, and uh, when we see the bigger picture of it, we see the same polarity, the same circle of energy is going in the cosmos. So in a way, everything is like in a circle, you see? Everything is circling. And it's important to understand when we are in our relationship, relationship with anything, the energy circuits need to flow or need to revolve in and out, in and out, receiving and giving. Receiving is feminine, giving is masculine. In a relationship, important to receive and give. In the society, it's important for us to receive and give. Then we are in balance. 
when this receiving and giving is in balance then we feel healthy then we feel abundant then we feel uh, you know we are centered we are balanced this is balance guys this is the divine union so we see the entire cosmos is already in the divine union so the question is why do we feel disbalanced sometimes we are not aligned to the cosmos that time we are not aligned to the divine wisdom that time and those are the times we feel we are not balanced so friends i will be doing one meditation with this i will explain you that before that let us go into some more details about this energy so now as we are calling it the sexual or the life force energy let's see what it is about so this energy how i define this energy is when this energy is flowing down it's going down it's producing baby for example right a sperm and a ovum meets and produces a baby and the same energy when it's going up that's what is the term called sexual transmutation that's what meditation helps us develop this kundalini energy start rising up right and it starts clearing all the chakras so sexual transmutation is a very important and an interesting subject uh, if we are uh, interested in our evolution we can use this sexuality this kundalini energy to evolve to create our lives to live the purpose of our life so i like master torkom what he says about Uh, the sexual energy he says sex in the physical body is a relaxation sex in the astral body is a pleasure sex in the mental body is creativity sex in the intuitional body is enlightenment so beautiful friends i recommend parkam sir's book and uh, one of the very beautiful book that we should all read if we have to understand sexuality is sex to super consciousness by the great master osho a wonderful must read book my perception about sexuality completely started changing when i read this book highly recommend uh, friends uh, this book sex to super consciousness by osho so let's go into a little understanding about chakras i'm sure we all know uh, how we are moving this chakra you know the we see the muladhara which is the at the base of the spine then we have the swadhisthana manipura then the heart anahata vishuddhi agnaya and sahasrara now the what are these chakras basically um chakras can be like a map in our evolution you know they it's it, it has its own psychology it has its own energy and because you know this this evolution is like you know if you don't have like a map it feels very baseless so i feel this is where the chakra comes into picture it gives you a map right so what is this root chakra so the root chakra is about feeling trust feeling secure feeling supported and when the muladhara is not open or it is not feeling safe it is blocked what happens is we are in fear we are insecure right so the in the muladhara we can see the layers now of sexuality in the muladhara sexuality is very mechanical it's on the very a uh, bodily level now nothing wrong with that but we have to keep growing above that so from the root the muladhara when we are coming to the sacral which is a swadhisthana we now start understanding the emotional part of it swadhisthana is about emotions when it's blocked we are we feel very guilt you know we have shame in it 
And when it's open, we are creative. We are in a flow. So from the root, the sexuality, which is, was very mechanical, now it starts gaining a little emotional. So we start connecting emotions with our sexuality, so, which is a little better. And then the sexuality moves into the solar plexus, which is about creating a strong identity. When the solar plexus is strong, we feel very confident. And otherwise we are feeling very weak, helpless. So when the sexual feelings are operating from the solar plexus, we are confident about the sexual act. The man is confident, the woman is confident. Otherwise we are not sure. We, are, we have a, a very feeble identity. The, our partners may not trust us because we, are, we feel helpless there. Right? And then sexuality moves into the heart. What happens is about if the heart is open, we, are, we, we feel unconditional love. We can give love. And if it's closed, we are in grief. We are in pain. So from this level, friends, the sexuality definition starts taking a very new shape because it's no more physical now. It's more from the unconditional love. Two person, when they have unconditional love, they can feel a polarity, they can feel a sexual connection even without touching each other. Right? So it starts taking a more deeper state. And from the heart, when it's moved the throat, it's about Vishuddhi. Vishuddhi is where we are, uh, you know, it's a chakra purification of expression of what we are talking. If it's closed, then we are non expressive. So even the sexuality is taking a different form in Vishuddhi. It's more about expression, about creativity between two people or even between uh, yourself. Sometimes you don't need a, a other to understand uh, sexuality, right? And then it goes into the third eye. And that what Turkom master is talking about uh, you know, sexuality in your intuition. And you are having an intuition. With that intuition, you are connected to the other person. With your third eye, with your intuitive self, you can have a polarity, a connection with the other person. And then it's the crown where you are feeling oneness. Of course, this is where sexuality dissolves, right? So friends, initially, these chakras, uh, we need to work this is what is called the inner world. And we need to clear these chakras, all the seven chakras. Uh, and it may not be in a chronological order because some people's heart chakra is open, but maybe the root is closed. Some people's sacral is open, but the third eye is closed. So we need to know which chakra hours are closed. So there are beautiful processes that can help us clear. This is like a journey. This is like an inner journey. There's a map. We need to clear all these chakras. So interesting that, you know, how uh, like the sage, sages or the meditators have created uh, or they have realized about these chakras. So now we can use it uh, as a guide in our spiritual journey. So friends, yeah, before uh, I go into this, uh, I would uh, do a process, the last process, and we can have some, uh, yeah, if Anita ma'am want to play some music, she can do that. And I will explain this process, friends, before we go into it. So, um, this is called the microcosmic orbit, how we have seen that all the cosmos are in rotation, you know, they are connected. So this beautiful practice is called the microcosmic orbit. And um, it is about breathing. And I will take you into a process, very simple, very powerful process. And I'm, I, I, I hope you will like it. 
right? So, Anita, ma'am, if you're there, uh, you can, yeah, you said, okay. So you can play some nice music. It's about yeah. the connecting our uh, you know, lower and the upper chakra, and then we move into the microcosmic orbit. And it's also to balance ourselves, our sexuality. Uh, there are many versions of microcosmic orbit, but I'm going to do a very easy version that can be easily understood and can be done by all. Again, friends, so I hope you are all comfortable, right? Take a comfortable posture. And relaxed as we okay. I think Anita ma'am the music cutting off so I think we should turn it off. Yeah it's better to turn it off Anita ma'am because uh, I think there will be the sound won't be yes. I think that's better. So friends, let us close our eyes and as we meet in this beautiful time today and this is a beautiful knowledge, the beautiful wisdom that can help all of us to tune into our real nature because the purpose of sexuality, purpose of gender is to take us to our real identity. If we can follow this wisdom, whatever we have termed as lower, what we call sex, what we call gender, male, female, the understanding can take us to the higher self, to the higher wisdom, to our enlightenment. So there is nothing actually which is lower and higher. He says, as above, so below, so below as above. Friends, let us close our eyes. We can cross our hands, cross our legs, or you can take a beautiful posture, sit straight. And it would be good if you can sit without a back support. It would be better. So sit without a back support and as straight as possible. And I'd like you to just observe your normal natural breathing. So you are breathing in and out. And as you breathe in and out, I'd like you to feel your heart, feel the heart center, feel the breath in your heart. And see if you can deepen your breath a little bit than before, a little deeper than before. And now see if you can breathe to your muladhara. Muladhara is where your backbone ends. Now feel that you're breathing in the muladhara and you're breathing out into the sahasrara. So basically you're breathing at the bottom of your spine. And as you breathe out, feel that your breath is touching your crown.
you can feel or visualize this that you are breathing into the muladhara breathing out to the crown we'll do it for some time Breathe into the Muladhara, breathe out to the Sahastara. feel as you're breathing into the Muladhara, I like you to breathe a little deeper and imagine that you're breathing into the core of the earth. Feel that the breath is reaching to the core of the earth. As you breathe out, you're breathing into the middle of the cosmos. And just feel that your spine is like a bamboo, hollow bamboo. And you're breathing through the spine, breathing into the core of the earth. And breathing out to the middle of the cosmos. A very powerful exercise to balance our sexuality, balance our masculine, feminine. Very powerful exercise. Keep breathing, breathing into the core of the earth. Breathing out to the middle of the universe or the middle of the cosmos. Whatever that means to you, whatever that you're feeling. Nothing wrong and right about this. And feel that your backbone is like a straw. Breathing in through the straw into the core of the earth, breathing out to the core of the universe. Keep breathing. Do it for some more time. like a hollow bamboo. Just breathing in, core of the earth, breathing out to the core of the universe. Now, 
breath slowly. Start breathing into your Muladhara and breathe out to your Sahasrara. Make the breathing smaller now. Breathing into the base of the spine. Breathing out to your crown. Finally, I like to come into your heart. Just feel the breathing in your heart. It will be there. nice so whenever now you're ready friends you can rub your hands put them on your eyes and allow them to open so wonderful friends so we are heading to the end of this class now and here uh, I would like to share some of the details I have. Um, so you can see these, uh, this is some details about me that I do some workshops on uh, Divine Masculine and Feminine. One of the workshop was termed Ardhanareshwar, Ecstasy, Sacred Sexuality. And uh, this is the upcoming workshop which is coming uh, possibly this month, the date are yet to be uh, announced. And you can find all those information about me on www.adityadatta.net. Find all the information there. Also, you can catch me on Facebook, um, Instagram, or YouTube. Um, also, I want to share about this program that we call iDare. And there is a page called Meditation Simplified on Facebook where we go live every uh, week or every Sunday. And we are taking some interesting topic to work on uh, using different uh, modalities, like different tools, like masculine feminine balance, the law of polarity, we do exercises on that. And it's a free platform, friends. You are welcome to join there. Uh, if you want, if you are a therapist or you are you are interested in self work, you can join there, and um, you know we, we can have you on one of the Sundays there. You can either take a session or maybe give a session about any anything that you want to share about personal healings. So basically, it's a platform that we have created to heal ourselves as facilitators or therapists, and uh, we extend our work to people, other others also. Right, so this is about me and now I, I am ready to take up any questions that you may want to share. Um, if you have any sharing or if uh, Anita Ji has anything from anybody, you can also share, ask. Yeah, is there any questions? Yeah. I think your uh, voice is not very clear, Anita Ji. Okay, now, sir? Yeah, I can hear now you. Now is it clear? Yes, yes please. Okay. Sir, I'm so having this, a question. Sir? Yes. Sir, this question is from PMC Global, sir. They are asking what to do we if we have to face the situation with many persons. Situation is with many person. Yes, yes, many persons. If we face uh, different types of situation, 
So right. how can we? So this is the question uh, which came from PMC Global Lives. Okay. Please, can you so answer this question? Is, uh, so the if the conflict is between many people, what happens then? Okay. So friends, if it's many people, we can place ourselves inside many people because it is conflict is actually not many. It may be okay. I have a conflict because he has a. a you know his nose is not straight i don't like him so i have a conflict with him i have a conflict with him because uh, you know he was my childhood friend he bullied me i have a conflict with him because he's a boss but basically it is just one conflict maybe it's a conflict of how insecure i feel when i face them so if it's one person or if it's 100% we can do this exercise facing all these 100% and feel what we are feeling we don't go into any story we can put ourselves in 100 people and we can feel what we are feeling and stay with that energy and breathe into that energy and see what happens thank you for this question anything else Suresh sir, are you having any question? So, if there are no question, I think then I am done with my job, <laughs> right? Otherwise, either people have understood me or they have not understood at all. So, maybe I have done my job well or have not done my job at all. So, that what means yes, and. Sir. many times people question you know how they can heal their relationship because this is where the major problem comes uh, about you know talking about relationships in healing our relationships and i say you know until a man discovers his inside woman or a woman discover his inside man we really can't heal this man woman relationship so and uh, how to discover is definitely by this awareness this knowledge sir, the uh, there is a question yes uh, there is a person named terry thomas so he raised sir. the hand so he want to talk to you so, yes yes sir, please sir unmute yourself and uh, turn on your video sir yes yes terry good to have you good to have you here how are you we can't hear you terry your voice is not audible sir no your voice is not audible terry uh, can you type it can you type it sir unmute your sir please sir, unmute, unmute. Uh, yes to unmute yes yeah he has unmuted yes i think it's the same thing <laughs> please type your question in your cha in chat box sir yes any uh, so by the time he types any other question anita ji or anybody has any other questions no question no questions okay there uh, is no there is my question my question is regarding how to understand our masculine and feminine sides otherwise okay so uh, how to understand these sides is uh, as i explained um, the nurturing the compassionate part of us is the feminine and the doer you know the person who is taking an action the part which wants to go outside you know take an action it's a outgoing force is the masculine quality so the more we are becoming aware of these two qualities the more 
you know, we start even developing it. And as I said uh, earlier, the best way to develop these uh, qualities is definitely, of course, through meditation. We need not confuse ourselves uh, 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 with, uh, you know, this knowledge. I think um, always uh, uh, we should start with the meditation. If we are a meditator, we will have an experience of it rather than only the intellectual understand. Here in the class, we had a more of intellectual understanding because that's also important. But we need to also have an experience of it. So if we are a regular meditator, these qualities will naturally come to us. The balance will, we will have the balance naturally. So for a woman uh, who is very feminine or, you know, in a way, uh, she's, she has a wounded feminine, she's uh, always in her emotion, she feels very insecure. When she starts to meditate, she starts develop, developing a divine feminine, a divine masculine in her. So the divine masculine will give her strength and support. The divine feminine will nurture her, right? And it can be for a man also. So I've given you three things that we can do to meditate. One is meditation to balance ourselves. Second is going into the nature, spending time in the nature. Third is gratitude practice. Immediately when we start doing that, they take you into a balance and you'll start uh, creating this feminine and masculine dynamics. So friends, I do uh, workshops where I go more deeper into the subjects and I do various techniques to help people find their inner masculine and feminine. So I'll be having these sessions uh, also, uh, you know, online because nowadays we only have online platform to do it. So uh, anybody interested can reach out to me and we can, uh, you know, discuss about it further. And one more thing I want to say, friends, is uh, even when we are meditating, the simple meditation practice, because Patriji is very clear about what is meditation and what is techniques. We should not complicate meditation with any techniques. There is no replacement for meditation. So meditation is anapanasati meditation. So I also see this masculine feminine dynamics in anapanasati meditation. For example, when we are sitting in meditation, sitting very relaxed with the nice music, nice fragrance, in a beautiful posture, that is the feminine part of meditation. You know, the body, all the senses that we are hearing, smelling, all the senses, the energy is the feminine part. And the masculine part is the awareness. We are becoming aware of the breath. Awareness of all the senses around. Right? So the more we are aware, awareness is a masculine quality. And nurturance, to sit in a beautiful way, happily with joy, surrounding ourselves with beautiful music, is the feminine. Right? And when these two things meet, meditation happens so beautifully. Right? So this is how I see meditation. So thank you, Terry, for this question. Anything else? Anita ji? Yes, sir. Deepa ma'am has raised the hand. Sorry, sorry. Deepa. Deepa has raised hands. Okay. Yeah, you can unmute yourself, Deepa. Hello. Yes. Yes. Uh, hi, Aditya. I hi, loved your session. Thank you so much for it. Beautiful processes you took us through. What I would like to understand is how to balance your feminine energy. You know, I feel that I'm not very happy. You know, at times I feel that I'm not very happy being a female. You know, had I been a male, then life would have been much more easier or better or more beautiful but uh, being a female has a lot of issues associated with it right, so right. so you know it's like i've not been able to come to terms uh, with being a female so uh, how do uh, you know get over this or how do you balance your energies or how do you bring more acceptance about this in your life so that you know your life becomes much more uh, balanced and beautiful right very beautiful question ma'am thank you for it many times we have faced this rejection uh, uh, like you said uh, being you know it's hard to accept as a female sometimes it happens to males also they don't want to you know they don't want to accept themselves as a male 
but we need to go to the root of it you see if we uh, i'll give you an example like uh, there are layers in our personality so if you go to the root of it sometime what happens there might be in the childhood there might be an absence i'm giving you, you you an example deepa ji it may not be for you but there might be the absence of the father figure or there might be an absence of the mother figure so what happens the femininity is not nurtured the femininity is not protected as a child right so you know because femininity is like a flower the girl child is like a flower right she needs protection she needs like a boundary she needs to feel supported right and her feminine femininity can germinate or can flower in the childhood so that support or that environment when it's not present sometimes in the childhood either because of the absence of the mother or either by the absence of the father it can happen or you know sometimes what happens there is a male child in the family and female child well male child is given more preference isn't so, that the case in all the households even today yes there that is that is why the the gender discrimination is there and uh, many people they are suffering we are still carrying the baggage so deepa ji what needs to be done is what baggage you are carrying from that and you need to heal that part of yourself and when you heal that you will be able to release that baggage what you carried from the past oh i carried a pain that it's not good to be a female maybe that's the belief inside right and when you release that belief you create another belief out of it i love to become a female you know be- becoming a female is beautiful becoming a female is you know it's like a durga it's like a shakti i am shakti right and it's it can be a celebration it can be a such a celebration becoming a female right but it doesn't happens until you look at that block and you release it so you need to go a little deeper and understand where it's coming from okay. and release that back Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Good. Yes. Anyone else? Yeah, I think Anita ji uh, we are done I think with the questions. Yes. Very, very, very well explained, sir, about how to balance the masculine and feminine nature in every person, and with a lot of meditations and the beautiful explanation you have given, sir. You have uh, made us uh, more clear on this particular topic, and you have gone very deep into law. What is law of polarity? And when we have mastered that law of polarity. that is mastering the life such a beautiful thing you have uh, explained and um, as you told we are not one we are we are, everybody is having that ardhanarishwara tatva yes yes and when we don't accept one part then we are not accepting as as the, we are not accepting the whole such a right. uh, beautifully you have explained sir and when uh, that masculinity and the femininity is balanced in the family it will become more wonderful and balanced beautiful right. it will be more right. uh, and this dynamics works in all relationship like a child and a mother child and a father mother and a father uh, grandmother and grandson it it these polarities are working everywhere and the more we can find a balance the more we can you know come out of it Yes. Yes. So, Deepa Ma'am, having some yes. questions, you can yes, Deepa. Yourself. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Aditya. Another question is, how can we balance both the masculine and feminine energies inside us? What yes. uh, What suggestion would you give, or how would you guide us? You know, to balance those particular energies inside us. Yes. Any particular so, meditation? Any particular med- process you want us to follow? Like I've done this um, inner child meditation a few days back. Yes. I did that, yes. and yes, I understood that yes, we have certain issues, you know, which um, 
were not very big, but still you carry the baggage from the past. And there is this disbalance inside you. So how do you actually balance those energies inside you? Right. So because, you know, it's hard nowadays to find the divine masculine, divine feminine. I mean, the kind of society we are living into, uh, you know, we don't see this uh, as examples. So it's very important first to find examples of divine masculine and divine feminine in your life. There might be someone whom you see as a divine feminine, as a divine masculine, so because our acceptance, our, uh, you know, their presence in our life is important. Right? So it could be like an uncle, it could be like a grandfather, or it could be like a, a guide or a master or a guru, or maybe uh, any archetypes like even Shiva Shakti, you know, at least we need to explore Shiva Shakti to at least understand what is this, what is this divine feminine, what is this divine masculine, right? And when we start connecting to these energies, in whatever way is your way of connecting to them, we start developing this balance. So in a way, we are releasing this toxic masculine feminine and we are cultivating the divine masculine and feminine in us, right? So the more we connect, okay, again, I'm going into my aggression. Again, I'm going into my insecurities. Okay, no, that was my past. Now I, I call upon the divine father, the divine mother. Please guide me. Right? So I go into, I, I did this tree meditation with you, right? It's a beautiful meditation. A tree is teaching us balance, right? We spend time with the tree, talk to the tree. It will teach us balance, right? So being in the nature, very beautiful way to balance, learn balance from the nature. The tree meditation you can do. Even Anapanasa. Very beautiful. Yes. Very, very beautiful. Yes. So the, these are all techniques, ma'am, Deepaji. These are all techniques, but I would recommend doing meditation separately is very, very important. Anapanasati, we need to be a regular meditator. So that we have to do a separate time. We can do this all kinds of techniques. These are nice to do. It enhances, it accelerates our journey. That's beautiful, we can do it. But Anapanasati meditation, continued practice is definitely required with all these techniques. So, yeah, so going into the nature, Anapanasati meditation, gratitude practice. These are even gratitude. The more we practice gratitude, the divine masculine starts coming up. Everything yeah. starts coming up. Right? Very true. Very true. I do have a gratitude journal which I write in every day. Yes. And yes. it does help. It helps a lot. And uh, there are some processes like, uh, you know, from the Taoism, from Tantra, um, studies of, you know, and you can do those studies also. I do some workshop, you know, uh, with an amalgam of Tantra, uh, Taoism. Uh, I'm part you know. of your WhatsApp group. I do follow you. Wonderful, wonderful, ma'am. Wonderful. So I, I try to bring out these different practices and you know we don't know which techniques we will be connecting to more and mm. you know that really liberates us right apart from practicing meditation right it, it may be a beautiful practice for, for us to support ourselves mm. so yes thank you so much Deepaji for joining thank very you. nice to have you thank, thank you so thank you so much Okay, friends. So I think uh, we are done with today's call. Anita ji, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for uh, detailed explanation of how to balance feminine and uh, masculine energies wonderfully. And uh, yes. meditation is the final solution where we can connect with ourselves and heal that and balance the masculine and feminine energies. Thank you so much, sir, for that wonderful session. Thank you. Thank you. And my last uh, message for everyone is we need to become like an alchemist. We all are alchemists and meditation teaches us alchemy. So meditation and inner work has to go hand in hand. Uh, only not just meditation. Meditation plus inner work is so important for our spiritual progress. So when, if we can do it continuously, we all become an alchemist and we all are alchemists. We have to recognize that. Thank you.
नमस्ते